Welcome to the cave. I'm Daniel Phillips of the Mishawaka Network, and boy, do we have a matchup for you here this afternoon here in the cave. A matchup between South Bend, Washington, the Panthers, and the Mishawaka Cavemen. We're looking forward to this one. We got a big one. We got an underdog, eight and nine team going up against number two in the NLC, Mishawaka Cavemen, eleven and four. I'll, let's talk about the Cavemen very quickly. Talk about how they've been doing so far. As I said, eleven and four record so far in the season. 4-1 and one in the NLC, which puts them as second place in the NLC conference. They came off of it. They're coming off of a huge win here back on Thursday. A win, 56-54 to 54 over Warsaw. Their first win over Warsaw in 37 years. And they did it in some pretty surprising and exciting fashion. An overtime buzzard beater coming from Cooper Pritchett. A left side layup with the right hand at the last second. Student section stormed the court. Everybody was excited, especially Cooper Pritchett. I know he was ecstatic getting that huge, huge play to seal the deal for the cavemen here in the cave on Thursday night. But now they've got to worry about the task at hand, these Washington Panthers. I know that they're not ex an extremely hot team, but they're still a pretty darn good team. Let's talk about their record so far. We mentioned that they're 8-9. That is below 500. That is not where you want to be but they're very close to where they want to be. Right now they're five and four and seventh in the NIC. Again, not where they want to be, but they have the skills, the players, the coaching, and the team to get to where they want to be. Let's talk about their last game. They faced off against Riley yesterday. They lost, fell it in by a pretty large margin score, 75 to 48. South Bend Riley, we know, is a very, very talented basketball team here in Northern Indiana. So matching them against them is always going to be tough. but. They, they, I would say, in a way, they kind of held their own. They're looking to bounce back here with this win. Back-to-back -back game days. Let's see what they can get done today. As I said, 5-4 and four in the NIC. They put them in seventh place in their conference. 8-9 on the season. They want to be better. Let's go back to Mishawaka very quickly. Let's talk about some more big games that they have coming up. The biggest one that comes to mind is the most, uh, the, the next, their very next game against Chesterton. Chesterton, a very good ball club. They'll be facing off against them not too long from now, next Tuesday. That will not be here. That will be at Chesterton. Let's talk about Chesterton very quickly. They have a very good record, 11-6, 3-2 in the Dunland Conference. That puts them fourth place in that conference. They're a very good ball, they're a very, very good ball club. Excuse me. So, Mishawaka matching up against them. That will be an extreme test. Let's see how they face up. But... Afterwards, they have a huge conference matchup. They're going to be facing off against Northwood. Northwood, they're number three in the NLC conference. They're five and two. That's their record in the conference. And 11 and six on the season. So, th that game very big for both of those schools. Either team wins that, they have a chance to win the NLC, which obviously we all know is a huge honor, especially going into sectionals. Gives a little confidence boost for sure, no doubt about it. So, Mishawaka preparing for that. Let's talk about who Washington has coming up next before we get, before we dish it off to WSBT and get on with the game before tip off. South Bend, Washington. Now they've got three huge teams, big schools, great schools in a row. They had, they had South Bend, Riley, lost to them last night. They got Mishawaka, a very good ball club. They're going to have a tough challenge here today this afternoon and then following that next Friday they will have Penn High School but at home so although Penn will be a very tough challenge they will be on their home court let's see how that plays in their favor once again we got a great one for you here about four minutes and 15 seconds until tip off we're going to go ahead and play some commercials for you that has been our Mishawaka Network pregame show I am Daniel Phillips of the Mishawaka Network Stay tuned. We'll be back for halftime. Play some commercials here. We'll see you at tip-off.
Some people see a huddle in the locker room. We see a second classroom. Some see a student athlete on the court. We see a future leader in the community. You see, high school sports in Indiana are special. That's because they're about learning and growing, not just winning and losing. Fans, I'm Commissioner Paul Nydig. Support education-based athletics in Indiana by buying a ticket to your high school's next athletic event. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903.
operate for you for a second. I just want to make sure we're getting the right angles, that's all. This should be better up here. I just wanted to make it so you can see a more fuller view of the basket on that side. I know it's a little tricky, and hey, if we need to make any more adjustments on that, let me know.
it up in mid. Guilty of the caveman foul. 49 seconds in the period. Substitution Washington. Jaden Lineberry, a 6 2 sophomore who averages two points and three rebounds a game. He'll come off the bench for Ryan Varga. And the K-Men will settle back into the defense, trailing by two as we're at the 44-second mark in County first period. Yeah, Parker for Washington, you know, is listed as a freshman, but if you would have just looked at him in his jersey, you'd think he's Great. more of a junior or senior. I would agree. Great dribble drive on a head fake and drive to the hole by Steven Reynolds. And Cooper Pritchett, very animated, thought he got the block cleanly, but instead Cooper will pick up his second foul. And that could loom large here as we're early in this contest, 34 seconds first quarter. Cavemen 11 and four on the year. South and Washington, a seven and nine basketball team. Losers of six in a row and eight of their last nine. Mishawaka during this four game homestand, the fourth of four this basically eight day stretch. They've won all three of those games against Goshen Clay and the Thriller Thursday against Warsaw. And the second free throw by Reynolds is up and good after missing the first. He connects on the second, 14-11 Washington. Their biggest lead is three. Washington settling in now to a 2-2-1. It's kind of three-quarter court press. Made famous in our area by Rob Berger after the last 20-plus years running that exact same press, falling back into his zone. Right side, they'll feed it left side now to Brady. Brady Fisher in the paint, tries to finesse a little fake to Reynolds who blocks the shot. Rebound Washington, transition runner to Corey Parker with a nifty up and under move. Half court, heave hole by Jack Troyer, hits the side of the backboard, no good, a good luck. Just couldn't get it to fall and we go to the quarter break. After eight minutes, South of Washington on the road, again looking to snap that six game losing streak, leads the Mishawaka Cavemen. Washington 16, Mishawaka 11. Here at two with Mishawaka came at basketball on 96 won the ton and on the Mishawaka network. Some people see a huddle in the locker room. We see a second classroom. Some see a student athlete on the court. We see a future leader in the community. You see, high school sports in Indiana are special. That's because they're about learning and growing, not just winning and losing. Fans, I'm Commissioner Paul Knighty. Support education-based athletics in Indiana by buying a ticket to your high school's next athletic event. We turn the page to quarter number two along with former K-Man coach and Mishawaka Hall of Famer Ryan Watson. I'm Brian Miller, alternate possession arrow to Mishawaka, trailing here in this end of one period, 16 to 11, and a bad pass and turnover on the opening possession of the period. Washington in transition. They get the shot and the possession, but missed it inside, and Mishawaka back the other way. We'll check in with Brady Gallo here on the next dead ball opportunity. Jackson Snyder, left side, looks to the inside of this Washington defense and that switch, Ryan Watson has kind of caused some issues for the caveman and there's a bad pass down in the paint to Corey Parker with a steel transition drive and the bounce pass to Johnson lost it out of bounds and a Mishawaka substitution, Landon Johns will take a chair. Anthony Nelson back in and let's head sideline. Out to the north sideline, Brady Gallo. Brian, someone I've noticed from down here on the sideline Washington has given the Cavemen a lot of respect out there on the perimeter, which is surprising to me because the Cavemen have not shot the ball well throughout this homestand. For me, if I'm the Washington head coach, I got to wait. Prove to me that you can make the three pointer, then I give the respect. Hey, guess what? You can make a three pointer when you get it to Jackson Snyder. Top there we side go. three. I was looking right at the camera, I didn't even see. Well, guess what? Jackson Snyder heard your announcement, so boom, he answered. There we go. And there's a $10 donation by sent here back to the Boys and Girls Club of St. Joseph County. So. Brady, keep us posted. I know you'll you'll uh, check in with Bodie Bender before halftime. So thanks yep. for that update. Good thoughts from Brady Gallo, Mishawaka Network. Ryan Watson, your thoughts here at 6:51, second quarter. 
Well, you know what, when I look at my shot chart right here, Mishawaka has only scored from basically offensive rebounds on the inside and some free throws. Washington has spread it out a little bit more. They play a little bit more one-on-one -on -one style like that right there. Great drive by that freshman that does not look like a freshman. DeCorey Parker ravages 13, has eight. He shoots 47% from the floor. He's played well here and Washington with a four point lead. Bounce pass to Rasan Johnson, who's subbed back in. Jack Troyer, center court now, goes to Jackson Snyder. 18-14 Washington looking for their eighth win of the season in the far right corner. Nelson, jump pass to Troyer, fakes it. Delivers a bounce pass down underneath to Brady, and then his reverse pass to Rasan stolen. Fisher with the loose ball, picking up, no one a foul. Yeah, Mishawaka, a little bit sloppy play here the first two minutes of the, the quarter with that one very close to their third turnover out of four possessions. But Brady did a good job collecting it, going up strong. Now he'll be rewarded with two free throws. LaVere Smith at the, uh, on the defensive end rather for Washington, guilty of that last foul. His first team's fifth overall, but the first of the period. And Brady Fisher puts the free throw up and off the mark. No good. Brady will have one more, and this one is nothing but net. Sitting right at his average, around 50%, you said, two for yep. four on the day. Averaging about 13 points a ball game, has six so far. 18-15 Washington, they will look to add to that score, but a long range right side miss is rebounded by Brady Fisher for the k -Man. Jackson Snyder across the timeline, k -Man shooting at the south basket here at the cave. Going from right to left as we describe it. And show it to you with the Mishawaka Network for those fans tuned in. Jump pass, Jack Troyer. Reverse skip pass, he receives it. Top of the circle to Jackson. Fakes it, gives it to Troyer. Back on the post, goes to Brady. Outside to Troyer, he'll try the three. Air ball miss, rebounded by Reynolds. Reynolds on the push down the left side of the lane. Puts it to the top. He'll pull up a three, rims it, missing badly. Rebounded by Jackson Snyder. Back the other way, came in trail by three with possession. Snyder works it right side. Inside to Brady. Brady muscles his way up. Tries to draw the foul. No blood, no foul. And now a timeout taken by Ryan Varga and the South and Washington Panthers. We'll take a break. 5.07 before halftime. Mishawaka trailing South and Washington. 18-15. You're in tune with Mishawaka K-Man basketball. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're not just good at insurance. We're good at Emma and Jake's just baby-proof their two-bedroom bungalow to prepare for baby number one insurance. We're good at Madeline and Chance's just gave in and became minivan people to make room for baby number two insurance. And we're good at Gabby and Nate's just moved to a house with a bigger backyard to welcome fur baby number three insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Your wife might call you that, but I, I, I had nothing to do with that, okay? But uh, hey, let's get an update on the U.S. Sidecraft your school board as some afternoon scores start to trickle in. Northwood, a big home court win today versus Beach Grove. 46-25. Earlier, in case you missed it, Northridge defeated Jimtown by 10, 60 to 50. Those scores on the U.S. Sidecrafter scoreboard. So a Washington timeout. They lead by three. We're at the five-minute mark before halftime, and a dribble drive by Wells around the defender puts the running jumper up. Can't get it to fall from 10 feet away. Rebounded by Brady Fisher. Fisher up the floor to Jackson. Snyder looking to the right with the right-handed dribble. Nothing there. At Washington, defense is really stymied since they switched it up. It has. They've been very active. Sometimes in zones, teams can get lazy, but right now they've been active hands and, and really active with their feet. Right side, Troyer, or rather, Nelson misses. Long rebound to Troyer, but he has the ball stripped away. Rebound, Reynolds drives the lane. Left-handed layup, no. Tapped up, no. Rebounded by Brady. Fisher races out of a crowd. Two on three break. Fakes it, drives in, and oh -ho -ho! It's going to be called for not an offensive charging foul, but a block defensively. And I think the official changed his mind at the last moment. It sure looked like it. That's uh, probably a 50-50 call there. Uh, but uh, Mr. Fisher got the call there, and he's going to be rewarded with two more free throws again. His fifth and, and sixth Bodie attempt Bender of the night. And Bodie Bender is confirming 
whether the basket is good. Yes, the basket is good. Brady Fisher probably got a benefit of the call. Basket makes it 18-17, and Ryan Varga is campaigning for a technical foul right now, and I, I don't blame him. Well, the Zebras are always right, certainly when they're on the court, but I, I think that throw. one could have been argued. Fisher's free throw is missed off the back iron. Rebound Washington. They'll quickly run it up the floor right side to Corey Parker, the freshman who's got eight already. He'll step back and launch a three and nail it. To Corey Parker with a triple. He's got 11, and Washington extends the lead back to a 21-17 four-point count. Quick feed inside. Brady Fisher, and this time the player control foul, and I think you flip those. I, I agree, but maybe a slight makeup call, but still really good position by Parker. Right now, between Reynolds and Parker, they got 19 of their 21 points. Mishwag's got to find a way to, to, to maybe stop them. Right now, Reynolds taking a couple of maybe ill-advised shots. Parker, though, seems to be in control. Really like his game right now to start. Top of the circle is Andre Wills. Looks left side. Instead, right side, they'll go, and Parker will launch and score his second triple, 24-17. Washington up by a touchdown. 3.40 before halftime, post feed. Brady, double team, muscles up the shot, soft off the rim, no. Rebounded by Steven Reynolds. Reynolds on the push, left side to Parker, another three up, misses off the rim. Rebound weak side to Brady. Fisher outlets to Jackson, Snyder races up the floor. A little bit of a heat check on that one. That might have been a little deeper than what Coach Varga wanted, but heck, when you've hit the last two, let her fly. Jack Troyer right side back to Jackson, now left side to Anthony Nelson. Nelson top of the circle to Jackson. Snyder 3-10 to go with the basketball here in the first half. Hook pass to Anthony Nelson. Nelson feeds it to Rasan. Good post up turnaround jumper. Just too strong. Loose ball rebound to Rasan. Kicks it to Nelson. Anthony from three. Got it! Big three, Anthony Nelson. The second triple for the K-Men. 24-20. Again, offensive rebound. Best chance always for a good look at three is on those offense rebounds when the defense is really sagged into the paint. Good kick out. Johnson to Owens, Owens to Parker. Parker top side to Reynolds. Dribbles in on Rasan, who tries to muscle him up. Fakes it on the end and then leans in. Puts up the jumper, no. Rebound on the tip up, jumper, no. Rebound, Mishawaka. And the ball by DeCorey Parker knocked out of the hand of Anthony Nelson. And it will be a foul, Washington, on DeCorey Parker. Common foul inbounds for Mishawaka. Substitution caveman. You will see Braden Freitag check in for Jackson Snyder. Snyder will get a bit of a breather. 2.29 to play first half. 24-20. Mishawaka trailing by four. The inbounds. Washington long three ball in that corner missed. Rebounded by Rassam. Johnson on the push. Works it to the left side. Picks up the dribble. Now at the half mark left side right in front of us. Jack Troyer. Freitag in the circle. Double team. Fisher out to Nelson from three. Anthony skims this one in and out. No. Rebound tapped up. Brady somehow gets the rebound. Puts it up and in. Brady Fisher muscles it away from three. Cannon three Washington defenders. Two minutes to the half. Caveman pull with it to 24-22. Getting pretty good offense there. Just a miss. You know, by Nelson. The shot looks a little bit flat. Parker dribbles in. Puts his shoulder down. Runs into Brady Fisher to get some space. Shot missing the rebound. Caroms out of bounds. Touch last, I believe, by South Bend, Washington. It is. Although Stephen Reynolds tried to buy the possession because he was standing out of bounds waiting for the official to hand the basketball. He just kind of shook his head and very politely said, no, 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 we're going the other way. 100 seconds in the first half. A minute 40 in the period. 22 for the Cayman. 24 for the Panthers. Inbounds. Cabin working inside. Anthony Nelson now gets the inside outside three. Misses rebound. Brady put it off the window. No. Nelson rebound out to Brady. Now Freitag will try a three. Rims it. No. Rebound on Anthony Nelson. Tries to muscle it back up. Bobbled it. Juggled it. Probably got away with the travel. Put it up and in. Good hustle play. Anthony Nelson on the offensive glass. He's got five. We're not at 24. 24. Probably, not really a probably about it. He definitely shuffled his feet, but <laughs> not you know what? there's no probably there, eh? Love the hustle. Dribble drive to Corey Parker. Works around a couple defenders and slides in under the basket, pretty much undefended. 26-24 back, Washington leading again. Washington 7-9 on the air. Mishawaka 11-4 outside Jack Troyer. Deep left point. Dribbles to the top, gives to Rassam. Rassam at 42 seconds of the half. 
Fisher looks a little tired right here, a little bit winded. Again, after a hard game Thursday, I don't think he's been out yet today. And Freitag with a bounce pass that Rasan fortunately chased down. 30 seconds. The Shawaka kind of a reset of their offense. Again, trailing by two. Deep left side of Jack Troyer. Looks like they'll hold for one now. Rasan lobs it out to Freitag. Braden, ball fakes it in, down to 16 seconds. And Bodie Bender will burn a 30 second timeout. And we use it to set up his final possession. We'll take a quick break, 15 seconds before half. 30 second timeout. Now, Bodie Bender will actually switch that to a full timeout. We'll do the same. 26 24 Washington. We're back after this. 96 won the ton and the Mishawaka Network. Hello, cavemen. It's Dr. Joe Winnack with Winnack Family Orthodontics. I'm excited to be a part of the caveman athletic season. Our office offers Invisalign and braces for both children and adults. Call us for your complimentary consultation today. We take our business seriously, but our ultimate goal is to put a smile on your face. For more information, visit our website at www.wernackfamilyortho.com. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're not just good at insurance. We're good at Matt's one-car, two-bedroom apartment with a home office slash home gym insurance. You, yeah. We're good at Nick's SUV and farmhouse with a remodeled kitchen slash art gallery insurance. And we're good at the Wilbur suburban home with the two-car garage slash rehearsal space insurance. Have you seen my hockey socks? Have you checked your sock drawer? Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. To her, thanks to Matt Emery for that update. Uh, to pass that news along, and we'll have more coming up on our halftime report. So the timeout, a triple team defense out to Rasan. Jump pass to Freitag. He'll throw up a three and get it at two. Inbounds, and it's stolen by Fisher. He'll put up the layup. Can't get it to fall. Rebound, Reynolds. One second. He'll try the half court shot. It will not happen. And a big three. Braden Freitag puts Mishawak in the lead at halftime. At the break, Mishawaka 27. And South and Washington 26. The three pointer by Freitag adds another $10 to the Boys and Girls Club of St. Joseph County. And we'll head down to the sideline as the Mishawaka Network's Brady Gallo is with K Ben head coach Bodie Bender. Coach, kind of an interesting half. You guys took the lead right at the end. What are you guys going to adjust there in the locker room? Well, I think we've got to do a better job of finding number three on offense. He said, you know, granted, we've made him hit some tough shots. Um, we just got to continue to make it tough on him and not let him continue to have clean looks. And, and I thought at times he's gotten clean looks, but for the most part, we've done a good job. Um, offensively, it goes back to what we always preach. We got to do a better job finishing around the rim. And do you think the Thursday's game against Warsaw has uh, caused any fatigue in this game so far? I don't know about a fatigue, maybe a little big game hangover from uh, uh, such a big win. But, you know, we're in a dog fight now. Our guys got to gut one out. Thank you, Coach. Bodie Bender, head coach for the Mishawaka Kidman, checking in with Brady Gallo of the Mishawaka Network. Halftime here, our halftime report just around the corner from the Mishawaka Education Foundation. Matt Embry standing by with an update for us during that halftime report on the U.S. Sidecrafter scoreboard. We'll come back and Ryan Watson and I will dissect this first half and talk about this, uh, well, the keys to success in half number two. Mishawaka at the break, leading south in Washington, 27-26. You're in two with Mishawaka K-Man Boys Basketball here this Saturday afternoon edition on 96 won the ton and on the Mishawaka Network. Hey, we're going to keep it here, folks, with the Mishawaka Networks. A little quick transition from WSBT, Brian Miller to myself. He's fabulous in the JV game as well. The fact that he's getting the varsity nod uh, game after game is not surprising to me considering how he's played. And then, of course, we've got to mention Stephen Reynolds, the 6'5", sophomore, and so, uh, son of the notable, prominent Washington girls basketball coach. He's got some sisters going to Purdue right now. And he's got a sister still playing for Washington, doing a good job this year. He's been putting on a show as well. I believe he's got eight points in the ball game so far, playing very well. Only one foul tally next to his name. He's got some clean looks, gotten some tough looks, but he's made a majority of them. I'm sure he's going to continue to heat up, continue to have a good game. Let's get back. Let's, let's go ahead and transition to Mishawaka. How are they doing? Brady Fisher's had some trouble finishing around the rim, but despite those troubles, he still has 10 points in the game. Uh, 
one of Mr. Walker's best players and Rasan Johnson. Scoreless still in the game, no fouls either, though. That's a good thing. But he wants to get some points on the board. Had one three-point attempt, no good on it. Had a rebound, tried to put it back up. Didn't happen. Hasn't taken a lot of shots so far. Thinking he's going to probably do that a little bit more in the second half. See what he does. Anthony Nelson had a three and a nice little mid-range shot. Had two other threes. He went one for three in the first half. Shot Last two shots, as if you heard uh, Brian Miller's co-commentator say, shots a little flat. A little flat on those last two attempts. Therefore, he didn't make them. But he still got five points in the ball game. And Bra uh, Braden Freitag, the last second three to put Mishawaka up by one point. Score 27-26. Huge clutch shot for him. They get to go in the locker room with the lead. Sure, they have a few things to tighten up. But let's talk about the Mishawaka Network in general. We're moving away from basketball. We're going to lead that to Brian Miller when they come back from their break. Mishawaka Network, we've got two events coming up next week. We've got on Wednesday a school board meeting. Mishawaka, school City, Mishawaka at Beager Elementary School just down the road here from Mishawaka High School. Then on Friday, we've got another game, a huge conference game between the Cavemen and, the Nor and Northwood. Huge, huge NLC matchup. Second place, third place. The Cavemen being second place in the NLC and Northwood being third place. So looking forward to see how that goes. But that's all we got for you right now. That has been our halftime show with the Mishawaka Network. I am Daniel Phillips. We're going to move on to Commissioner's Corner with our IH IHSAA Commissioner, Paul Knighting. We'll see you then. It's time for the Commissioner's Corner, an exclusive weekly conversation about Indiana high school sports with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Nidig. Now for an up-to-the-minute report about what's happening in the constantly changing world of high school sports, here's Coach Bob Lovell with Commissioner Paul Nidig. Welcome back, everyone, to our weekly conversation with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Nidig. And Paul, thank you so much for taking time to be with us. We are in tournament time. We're in tournament mode. Girls sectionals this week. Uh, we had uh, uh, wrestling last Saturday. Girls swimming coming up this weekend. It is a tremendous time of year for our student athletes around the state. You know, we, we've walked this walk a few times, but, you know, every year this, this new tournament season brings a, a new level of excitement. You know, it's, you, you know, you have your regular season and that's been done. And the girls certainly just finished up their regular season and and uh, now well, they get to see if all the practice has paid off and, and they're going to march through this tournament and, and hopefully achieve some of their goals. And we also know teams will not. But at the end of the day, participation in an education-based athletic system is much more than tournament success. And that's one thing we'll always be proud of. But, uh, you know, the other thing, Coach, with uh, girls basketball, uh, we have a phenomenal partner in the Fever. And actually, some of the Fever players are out around the state attending girls sectionals tonight we so appreciate their sports and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. their their support and being able to uh, also promote what the fever does and i think they're going to have a special year this year i agree 100 percent. you and i have the luxury of time behind as we've lived these experiences as as student athletes as being members of the athletic community and uh, I always tell parents and always tell kids, enjoy this, because this is a lifelong memory for you, and, and do it and do it the right way. It matters. It matters for all kids, and we're so proud of being able to keep an education-based athletic system that's focused on the classroom first and also focused on the last kid who makes a team. That's, we have to make sure what we do is good for that kid, not all kids. I mean, and, and, and in turn, that makes right. it good for all kids. Paul Knighted joining us. We're talking about the IHSAA. All right, Paul, reclassification is a topic that's out there coming up very soon. You're going to be releasing uh, the Department of Education enrollment figures around the state to begin this process. And just as a reminder for everyone, reclassification is every two years, correct? That's right, Coach, every two years. And as I often have said, uh, you know, there will be a lot of – this is one of the things that we do that awful, often – um, brings a lot of debate to the table, you know, but that's okay because it matters to people, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the, the, the thing that I often say is that everybody out there that cares about what we do can draw a perfect tournament for their school. And certainly we'll hear about that also along the way, and, and I understand that too. But, yeah, we're ready to get ready to begin. The, the actual numbers will be released in the coming days. Once those numbers are out, 
then we'll start putting, uh, we've already begun putting committees together. And one big change this year, Coach, is that uh, Mm -hmm. we used to divide classes even because of the disparity between the size of the schools that we have in the state. Uh, The largest 20% 20 of the schools in the state will be in 4A, then we'll have 25% in 3A, 25% of the schools in 2A, and 30% in 1A. And that's simply because not all of our 1A schools participate in all sports. Right. Uh, is why we put a few more schools in single class. And the, the other change this year is we have a, 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 we're going to be aligning sectionals across all four class sports to where your basketball, girls and boys, your volleyball, baseball, mm-hmm. softball sectionals will have uh, the same opponents. Maybe a slight adjustment with success factor, but you're going to be, those schools are going to be playing each other in all four class tournaments. And then we have another committee that does a three class tournament. And then, obviously, the six-class football tournament is our third committee right. that starts putting these sectionals together. The commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Nighting, with us talking about all things IHSAA-related. Commissioner, be safe, you and your staff, when you're traveling, watching games. Thanks so much for your time, and thanks for all that you and your staff do to make sports, high school sports in our state matter at the level that it does. Thanks so much. Thanks, Coach, and I appreciate everything you do uh, in this great state. Thanks for listening to The Commissioner's Corner with IHSAA Commissioner Paul Neidig and Coach Bob Lovell. And thank you for your continued support of the high schools in your community. That's after a six and one start to the season. And they're giving the Cavemen all kinds of fits here as Mishawaka looks to finish this four game homestand with a 4 0 record of the inbound to the Cavemen, or rather to the Panthers, rather. And Washington turns it over with a great steal by Cooper Pritchett. And Pritchett dribbles the lane, put it up, no, tapped up by Fisher, no. And the rebound down to Washington. So just underway here in period three. 27 26 is the tally. Center floor. Smith hands it to Parker. Parker fakes out, goes in, dribble drive to the lane, put it up no good, rebound Mishawaka. There were four white jerseys around on the miss, and not one green jersey there wanting that rebound. Justin Snyder in the corner. Jackson looks for help, reverses it back out to Brady. Came in with their starting five out there with Nelson Fisher, Pritchett, Johnson, Rasan, and it is, yes, Jackson Snyder. Watches three, misses, rebound. Outside, they'll feed it to Rasan, who is scoreless in the first half. Nets his first point with a good aggressive dribble drive with the right hand from the left side. Again, offensive rebounds right now. First half, I have Mishawaka with 19 rebounds and Washington with just six. That's what's kept Mishawaka in the game with their poor shooting. Johnson, the senior, dribbles inside, gets some contact with Cooper Pritchett, misses the shot, rattles in and out, no good. And the rebound down to the caveman. Up the floor, Jackson Snyder, right side to Rasan. Dribbles to the right point, looking for a screen. Instead, it's a double team. Reverse skip pass in the corner. And Anthony Nelson is bumped and fouled defensively by Josh Johnson. A quick look at the halftime statistics as far as scoring is concerned. Washington with just three players that did tally. Andre Wells off the bench had a couple of free throws for two. Stephen Reynolds had eight all in the first quarter. And 16 for DeCorey Parker. Center floor, Rasan Johnson, who again just scored his first points of the afternoon. Jackson Snyder, Braden Freitag each had three. Pull up jumper, Cooper Pritchett will net his eighth point of the afternoon. He spent a lot of time on the bench in period two due to some foul trouble. Picked up two in that first quarter, and it's 31-26 caveman. Elsewhere, Mishawaka, Anthony Nelson had five in the first half. And Brady Fisher led Mishawaka scoring with ten. Center floor, it is Stephen Reynolds now. Mishawaka switching up their defense just a bit. Donovan Johnson, jump pass to the corner. It is Johnson to Johnson, and Josh Johnson will nail his first points of the afternoon on the long range, right wing three. 31-29 now, Panthers have cut it to two. Jump pass to the corner, Anthony Nelson fires it to Cooper, all alone, free throw line jumper's good. Cooper Pritchett with 10. Looks like Coach Bender probably made a point at halftime about attacking right at that free throw lane, the soft spot in, in virtually any zone, especially a flat 3-2 zone. 
Steven, Cooper's two for two. Sorry, Stephen Reynolds, little dribble drive jump pass. And Charging. Reynolds jump passes into the corner to Donovan Johnson, and in the process, Reynolds crashes into Cooper Pritchett, who is a professional at drawing those player control and offensive charging fouls. That will be Stephen Reynolds' second foul of the day. Two against the Panthers here in third quarter, 5-17 to play in the, in the frame. Top side, Jackson Snyder from Coop. Pritchett now sets a screen to the left side. Now they'll go that side to Anthony Nelson. Post feed to Anthony. Back outside. It is Jackson top side. Triple missed. Rebound chased down by Snyder. He'll take it to the glass. Inside to Brady. Lays it up and in. Brady Fisher's got a dozen, but a great dribble drive and give by Jackson Snyder, who gets the assist. And an offensive rebound. That has been the highlight stat of the day, hasn't it? Sure has. 444 here, third period. Little shake, little bake to Corey Parker. A little flip pass out of Reynolds. Thinks about it, then launches a three. Too strong. Rebound caroms out to Brady. Fisher hands to Snyder. Jackson on the push. 4.30 to play third quarter. Mishawaka leading by six. 35-29. Free throw circle. Pritchett, right wing to Rasan. Draws double team attention. Now backs it up. Looks for the post lob. Nothing there. Outside of Jackson. Looking to the teeth of that... Uh, Got a 3-2 zone almost. Left corner, Anthony Nelson, post lob. Outside, Brady finds Jackson Snyder, misses the three. That was good inside-outside look on the baseline. The rebound down to DeCorey Parker. He'll race it down the middle of the floor. Crashes into Rasan Johnson. No blood, no foul. Missed shot, rebound, and put up no. Rebound block, and a foul. Jackson Snyder will be guilty for the block. Washington really is pushing the, uh, the tempo there on any miss that they can get and a rebound. They do a nice job attacking off the dribble. Mishawaka uh, is kind of settling for some long-range threes. Fortunately, they have been able to uh, corral the rebound and get some easy looks. Washington substitution Mike Stuckey will check into the game. 5'9 freshman. Looks like the argument here, it sure looked like he was going up for the shot here, but they're going to award them the ball out of bounds underneath. So instead of a shooting foul, although they foul against Mishawaka, they're actually going to say with the foul was on Anthony Nelson. I thought it was on Jackson Snyder. Inbound, stolen by Cooper. Pritchett on the steal. Two on two. Bounce pass out of Brady. Head fake. Put it up and in. Great, great feed there by Cooper. Good timing. Great bounce pass for the easy bucket. 37-29. Mishawaka with their largest lead of the afternoon. It is eight, right side, or left side rather. Reynolds fakes, dribbles, drives, jumps, shoots. Wow, what a soft touch. Can't get it to fall. Rebound Pritchett. Now lets to Rasan. Rasan races to the forecourt, then puts on the brakes, and down shifts in the first gear to reset the offense now. Rasan tries to work it inside. Back out to Coop. Deep right wing. Goes hash mark right side to Rasan. Will Mishawaka kind of force Washington to come out of this zone? Free throw lane, turnaround jumper, just in and out, no, missed by Cooper. Rebounded by Brady, tries to lean in, muscles up the jumper, soft off the rim and go! Brady Fisher kind of put that shoulder down to get just that little extra space and gets his 16th point, and Ryan Varga will burn a Washington timeout. 3-0-1 to go, third quarter, came in by 10. 39-29. We're back after this. 96 won the ton at the Mishawaka Network. Monday, Tuesday. Some people see a huddle in the locker room. We see a second classroom. Some see a student athlete on the court. We see a future leader in the community. You see, high school sports in Indiana are special. That's because they're about learning and growing, not just winning and losing. Fans, I'm Commissioner Paul Nardi. Support education-based athletics in Indiana by buying a ticket to your high school's next athletic event. Community, collaboration, teamwork. This Ryan Watson, I'm Brian Miller. 3.01 to go third quarter. Mishawak has opened up a 10-point lead. And hey, fans, many of us spend more time thinking about what's for dinner than maybe thinking about our retirement. Think your retirement needs a little more attention? I got a guy you can call. Ryan Watson from Edward Jones. Yeah, he's sitting right next to me. Don't bother him now. He's doing basketball. But call him Monday for your financial advising and uh, 
assistance. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Ryan Watson, Edward Jones, McKinley Avenue in Osceola. Is that how you uh, wrote it there? That was perfect. Wow, I, let's, not, let's not stretch it. Missed shot from outside by Reynolds. Rebound put up no good by Stuckey. And the rebound after the Washington miss to Mishawaka. Jackson Snyder, right side to Rasan. Dribbles in the paint, bobbled it. Now leans back and put it up and in against the double team. Rasan had the angle just so slightly juggled it, but regained his mental presence to put it up and in. Came in by a dozen. This is a really key moment right here for Washington where this game can either get blown wide open or they can hang in there. Donovan Johnson center court to DeCorey Parker against the double team. Now Parker looks to direct traffic. Picked up by his numerical counterpart Jackson Snyder. Turns, spins, leans, fades. Nice little left hand in reverse. Layup is good. DeCorey Parker, that's his 18th point. Big bucket there to stop the bleeding for Washington. They really need to uh, to bounce back here defensively and especially on the glass if they're going to hang in this game. Rasan, top of the circle, thought about a three outside to Jackson, deep right wing. Ball fakes it in, gives it to Coop. Double team, pritch it out to Rasan. Thought about a three, now slows it down in a minute 45, third period. Again, Mishawaka led by one and a half, 27 26. Leads now by 10, 41 31. Add to that lead, no, as Cooper Pritchett can't hit the Bank shot off the window, left wing. Rebound, Panthers quickly up the floor to par the, the Corey Parker show. Dribbles in the paint, falls down, gives to Reynolds, layup is good, and a foul. Good give up there by DeCorey Parker, who drew the double team, dished a little baseline bouncer to Stephen Reynolds, who's been quiet in the scoring column since the first quarter. Nets his 10th point, and a foul there on Mishawaka. Yeah, Parker kind of lost his balance there, unfortunately was able to still uh, have enough sense to make that little pass there on the baseline to their other big scorer and a uh, pretty tough stop 6-5 guy up near the rim. Very heady play. Jackson Snyder guilty of that caveman foul. His second, team second of this third period, a minute 23 in the quarter, and that three-point play cuts it to a 41-34 contest. Jack Troyer fires it inside. Layup is good. Boy, a lot of contact off the rim, and the basket was literally shaking as both offensive and defensive players hit it, but the ultimate stuff talk helped, and now back the other way, DeCorey Parker launches and scores a three. He single-handedly, Ryan, is keeping watching in this game. He sure is. Bounce pass, good post up move. Troyer with a great feed to Cooper. Lay it up at him. Pritchett had the one and two defenders on his hip. And now he'll go to the stripe looking for an old-fashioned three-point play. And the Washington foul on number 12, Jaden Lineberry, his first, team's third. Substitution, Washington, Josh Johnson will return for Donovan Johnson. And Coop will go to the free throw line looking for his 13th point of the day. He averages nine. Free throw up, good soft touch at him. 45-37 now, 50 seconds of the period. Reynolds dribbles left baseline, caught off defensively, fakes the outlet pass, leans in, soft touch, no, but he'll follow his own shot, tip it up at him. Steven Reynolds with 13. He averages 21. Back court inbounds to Rasan. Now to Brady. Reverses back across the far side to Jackson Snyder. 32 seconds through the corner. Into the forecourt now, Jack Troyer. Thought about an entry pass, instead goes back outside to Jackson. Snyder with the basketball, 24 seconds of period. Inside to Coop, double team, feeds Brady, long lean in, puts up the shot, missed, rebound Brady, muscles it up, no good and a foul. Came in really pounding the ball down inside. Mishawaka does an absolutely excellent job passing the ball. There's not one player that's been on the floor that ever looks panicked. They all look very calm when they have the basketball, do an excellent job at the good old fashioned just pivot, squaring up to the basket, looking, which has led to the majority of their baskets have come off of assists. And Brady Fisher will rattle a free throw too strong off the back iron. It thought about a soft touch ball, but instead of rattle out, no good. Brady right now is 16 points, although just two of six so far on the day at the charity stripe. Second free throw by the senior. This one with a soft touch at him. 47-39, Brady's 17th point, and at 15 seconds, third quarter, Washington with a big possession right here. They'll work it left to right, Parker across the timeline. Now works it with a screen to the left side. Now dribbles to the left point, explodes to the basket, puts on the brakes, fades, fires, misses, rebound at the horn, Brady Fisher, and the quarter is concluded. 
after a fast three. quarter. A very quick paced quarter. Mishawaka with the lead after three. K Ben 47, South of Washington 39. You're in two with Mishawaka K Ben basketball. 96 won the ton and the Mishawaka Network. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. We turn the page to quarter number four, along with Ryan Watson. I'm Brian Miller. Brady Gallo of the Mishawaka Network with our sideline reports. We'll check in with him here in just a moment. And Matt Watson, Embry, our studio engineer. Watson switching up to a traditional 2-3 zone there to start the quarter. K-Men start the period with Landon Johns, the sophomore. He played limited in the first half of play, check in to start the fourth period. He will team up with seniors Cooper Pritchett with Son Johnson and Jack Troyer while Jackson Snyder subs in and a high lob pass just past the midcourt stripe into the backcourt. Jackson into the free throw circle. Trooper Pritchett with a nice turnaround jumper. That is Coop's hot spot today. He has got six field goals and 15 points on the day. 49-39. Back the other way, left side. And Mike Stuckey called after a good head fake for a walking violation of the travel and turnover Washington. Back to Mishawaka goes the basketball. Just underway here in period four. Yeah, and I, I know it's early in the fourth, but I think this is a key moment where the cavemen have stretched the lead to double digits here. And uh, it, it can stretch a, a little bit further, or Washington can maybe keep uh, continue to stay in this game. Hassan playing the point, now picks up his dribble, gets the double team back out center floor to Cooper. Cavemen trying to space the floor, but Cooper spreads in, feeds it to Landon Johnson, gets it back. Somehow saved it as he fell down. Outside to Troyer, inside to Pritchett. Ball pinballs around after it hits a couple of knees, a couple of shins, a couple sets of hands. And finally a jump ball called, and possession arrow will favor Washington. Washington came out, extended their 2-3 zone, and trapped a little bit initially out near half court. I don't know if the cavemen put Vaseline on their hands in between the, uh, the the quarters there, but none of them caught that ball cleanly that whole possession. It was like the uh, slippery pig contest. Dribble drive. It is Parker. Good, strong move. And then a soft finish at the end. To Corey Parker, don't look now, but he has got 23 points this afternoon. He averages 13. Center floor, Rasan. Free throw circle. Pritchett. Outside left point to Jackson. Snyder on the dribble. Washington again stretching that defense out just a bit. At 6.42, fourth quarter, Washington trailing 49-41. Rasan Johnson for three, launches, misses. Probably not the shot that Bodie Bender wanted. Rebounded Reynolds. Up the floor comes Washington. Reynolds fakes it left, turns, puts on the brake, turns, spins, jumps, shoots, soft touch, no. Loose ball rebounds into the hands of Jackson Snyder. And then, while well, Justin Rambus, who started the fourth quarter, just crashed inside. And now in the corner, Landon Johns from three, short, rebound Washington. They will run with it. Josh Johnson left of the lane and juggled it and lost it out of bounds, although touched last by the Mishawaka Cavemen. Substitution, Mishawaka. Brady Fisher in for Cooper Pritchett, and Anthony Nelson subs in for Rasan Johnson. Yeah, Mishawaka probably in a little bit of a hurry there with those last two threes that they kind of jacked up. And to be honest, Washington, they got somebody hotter than a firecracker right now and to Corey Parker and took a nullified shot. They need to feed him the basketball as hot as he's been. Parker outlets to Josh Johnson, misses the three, rebound, caveman in about a 70-foot pass up the floor. The Brady Fisher would beat everybody back up the floor. That's his 19th point. 51-41, Steven Reynolds, step back three, launches left wing, misses, rebound tapped by Troyer, or rather by Nelson, and controlled by Snyder. Up the floor, Jackson, right side. Brady steps around the defender, puts up the shot, ball blocked away. 
and lost out of bounds by Mishawaka. Fisher thought there was a bit of contact in there, and Bodie Bender, I am sure, is asking that same varied question here on the near sideline. Yeah, it sure looked like on that drive he had some hands in there swiping at his arm, but the Zebras saw it differently. Parker defended there by Jack Troyer. Now some help defense of Jackson Snyder. Goes left side to Reynolds. Explodes to the baseline. Running jump pass is deflected and tracked down by Landon John. John's on the push. Races left side. Thought about pulling it up. Now dribbles through traffic. He's got a defender all over his hip. And Josh Johnson knocks it out of bounds in front of the K-Man bench area. And then Johnson apparently said something, and I'm not sure it was on the Good Sportsmanship Network, to Braden Smith and to Trey Thomas because they're getting a good laugh down at the end of the uh, bench area. Yeah, I don't think he was praying. <laughs> I didn't think he was either. Center floor, Snyder. Jackson goes outside left point to Jack Troyer. Dribbles in the paint. Jump pass in the corner. Thomas, or rather, Nelson rather. Feeds it inside. Jackson ball knocked away and stolen by Washington. Up the floor, Josh Johnson dribbles to the corner. Goes left side. Three ball. Stuckey got it. Mike Stuckey was hoping for a three from there earlier, but called for a travel. This time he hits his patent shot, and Washington, after the basket, calls a full timeout. We'll do the same, 440, to play fourth quarter here from the Caves. Still lots of basketball to be played. Cavemen lead by Hello, seven. Cavemen. It's Dr. Joe Winnett with Winnett Family Orthodontics. I'm excited to be a part of the Cavemen Athletic Season. Our office offers Invisalign embraces for both children and adults. Call us for your complimentary consultation today. We take our business seriously, but our ultimate goal is to put a smile on your face. For more information, visit our website at www.wenekfamilyortho.com. Hi, I'm Nate Zolman. In 1963, my father, Bud Zolman, began working in the tire and automotive service industry. After many years of hard work and dedication, he and my mother, Diane, founded Zolman's Tire in 1978, 45 years ago. Today we have eight retail locations and three commercial truck tire and diesel locations. After all these years, Zolman's is still going strong, serving you and your family for three generations. Buy local, shop local, Zolman's Best One Tire and Auto Care. On South and Adams tonight over the Great Western Forum. I'm gonna tip our cap to Coach Chad Blasco, his coaching staff and serving those girls on a hard-fought effort in the sectional, getting a win Wednesday over Plymouth. Falling in last night in the semifinals to an incredibly talented Washington club, and they will uh, certainly be a favorite going into the sectional championship tonight. So after the timeout, Washington, they will come out with a little bit of trap at midcourt, and Jackson Snyder bobbles the dribble, jump passes to Cooper. Cooper on the press, feeds it inside Anthony Nelson, head fakes, falls down after he has his shot blocked, rebound Washington, and then a foul on the caveman it will be on either brady fisher or on anthony nelson let's wait and see waiting for the report and it will be brady fisher's second foul you know really really nice uh head fake there by uh by nelson but sometimes kids get in a hurry then after the shot he fake, did exactly trying that. to shoot before the guy has even you know started to be on his way back down i think that happened in that case he was kind of hanging around still wasn't he parker yeah. Double team outside to Stuckey. He'll try a three, hit one a moment ago. Missed it. Rebound tapped up, tapped up, and controlled by Cooper. Now lets to Rasan. Three on the three break, and the rimming layup is good by Rasan Johnson. Kind of slowed down, then shifted it back into high gear and stepped around the defender to net his sixth point. 53-44, Mishawaka. We're at 3.50 to play in regulation. Center floor, Steven Reynolds. Step back, three ball launch. Long range miss. Loose ball rebound. Good check off by Anthony Nelson. And the loose ball picked up by Cooper Pritchett. Outlets to Jackson. Snyder on the push. Down the middle of the lane. Bounce pass right side. Rasan easy layup for two. That penetration drive by Jackson Snyder drew defensive attention. And that was an easy lay-in for Rasan Johnson. Uh, difference in the two possessions. Last time Washington held the ball for 20 seconds. But unfortunately for them, it stayed in number three's hand the entire 20 seconds. Kind of took an ill-advised long three. Mishawaga passed the ball for an assist on the other end. This time to Corey Parker takes... Matters into his own hands and runs with a little right-handed jumper. The 5'10 freshman, don't look now, has 25 points. Rasan Johnson, double team, ball somehow knocked away and saved right to Cooper. Outside to Jackson Snyder, dribbles around the defender, and a blocking foul called on South of Washington. 
that ball and that play and that sequence just a little helter skelter and Jackson Snyder going into the lane but maybe a bit out of control was fortunate to draw that blocking foul on Justin Rambus for South and Washington his first team's first of period number four exactly three minutes to play in the fourth quarter and Jackson Snyder who's been right around that 80 percent mark at the free throw line misses this one Snyder was two of four in the Thursday overtime win over Warsaw 56-54 finished with seven points and as he misses the first comes right back and nets it perfectly for his fourth point 56-46 under three minutes to play right side to Corey Parker picked up by Anthony Nelson now the switch off defensively Brady is on it double team loose ball on the floor saved out there by Parker gets it to Stuckey on the wing left point Back to DeCroy Parker, back to Reynolds. He'll try the three, launches, misses. Rebound Brady. Brady lobs it up the floor. Rasan Johnson puts it up. Oh, shot blocked from behind. It is a goaltending violation or a basket interference call that Bodie Bender is begging for. Not sure he should beg because I think that happened, but instead, no basket. And There's the, only a few players in the area that can probably have an offensive basket or a you know, goaltending call. And certainly Reynolds is one of them. That was one heck of a block. Oh, yeah. I tell you, you, you can see why there are colleges after him because he does a great job elevating on his jump shot like that one there from 15 feet. He's got long arms, beautiful form. And just scored his 15th point. 56, 48, 205 to play. Nelson inside to Pritchett, outside to Brady. Kind of leans into his defender and lays it up and in. Good strong move by Fisher, who's got 21. 58-48, K-Ben stayed within, or up by 10. Bounce pass goes to Reynolds. Bobbled, but chases it down. Works left side, defended there by Pritchett. Reynolds picks up his dribble. Right side to Parker, he'll try the three, got it! To Corey Parker, he is something special. Just a ninth grader. His fourth triple, his 28th point, 58-51. Three ball launch left corner by Anthony Nelson. Rebounded by Washington, quickly up the floor, and a little stutter stepping around the defender, put up no good. And do we have a foul on the floor outside? The outside official will get the call first. It'll be a foul on Mishawaka, whistled on Rasan Johnson. Probably not the exact shot that uh, Coach Bender would want with a minute 30 to go up seven. You know, although he was open, it's more important to burn some of that clock. To Corey Parker to Reynolds. Reynolds falls down, leans in, puts the shot up, no good. A lot of contact between, between he and Cooper Pritchett, but after the miss, no harm. And now Brady Fisher has the ball tapped away, stolen by Reynolds, and then Reynolds going on the attack, and he's bumped and fouled by Brady Fisher. Probably not a bad foul. No, not at all. I mean, uh, certainly Reynolds had the advantage there in the open floor, so reaching in, let Mr. Walker reset their defense. And not giving up an easy two or yeah. maybe a slam dunk for momentum. A minute 12 to play, a caveman by seven, 58-51. Center floor of the inbounds goes to Donovan Johnson, who fakes it, dribbles, and a reach and foul defensively. Whistled on Mishawaka's Anthony Nelson, I believe. You are correct, yes. I am still not a fan and not used to the new, you know, the, the fouls and free throw rule that has, you know, uh, come into the play this year. It sure has changed the style. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Quarters. Right side inbounds runner put up by Josh Johnson. No loose ball rebound saved after a mad scramble to Razan to Brady. Right side Jackson Snyder, and he goes for the touch pass to Cooper Pritchett. Coop was begging for it to go up on an alley oop. Instead, he cut it behind him and missed him, but it was deflected out by Washington. So, Mishawaka ball. We're under a minute to play. 54.4 seconds to be exact. Inbounds, it is Anthony Nelson. Feeding it into Brady. Now Rasan in the free throw circle. Cooper double team bounces it back outside. And Mishawaka with a seven point lead. Gonna play keep away. Rasan back out center court to Brady. And Brady chased down by DeCorey Parker. And now a whistle and a foul on the Panthers. And we'll see Brady and Freitag sub back in the game. Boy, what a big three he hit in the closing play of the fourth quarter, or the second quarter rather, before halftime. And Freitag will sub in for Anthony Nelson. 39 seconds, though, Mishawaka 58-51 leader. Backcourt inbounds to the caveman. Jackson Snyder across to Rasan, and then he's reached in and fouled defensively by South and Washington. And on Josh Johnson, I show him for his first on the day. Actually, let's check that, his second of the day at 33 seconds in the quarter. 
still a few fouls, you know, to, to give here before Mishawaka can, you know, get to the free throw line again. Without one and ones anymore, it sure has changed everything. Inbounds Caveman Oh, and a traveling violation called by the outside official on Brady Fisher on the give and go. I so didn't see that one. Clock stops at 30 seconds on the exchange and the turnover Mishawaka. Possession Washington down by a touchdown, 58-51. Still life here for Washington. Mishawaka's got to find Parker and Reynolds. There is Parker. Dribble drives it. He'll fire up a three right point. Miss. Rebound on a hop to Cooper Pritchett. Down to 20 seconds. Cooper will dribble up the floor. Cautiously puts on the brakes. And he's hacked and fouled from behind by Josh Johnson. Or maybe DeCorey Parker. They're going to call Josh Johnson for his third foul. 16.4 seconds to go. Again, the new rules in high school basketball this year states that there have to be Five fouls each quarter before you go to the free throw line and shoot two. There's no one on one any longer, but that foul count resets every period. Inbounds of Mishawaka, Jackson Snyder, lightly defended there by Josh Johnson, and then a violation called against the caveman and Jackson Snyder, who looks quite miffed as he's on the seat of his pants, but thought he was pushed down, but no, the officials let the play happen and turn over Mishawaka. Steven Reynolds dribbles, fires left side. Runner put up no. Rebound Jackson Snyder. He's going to dribble out the crowd. And now a reach-in foul there on Justin Rambus is going to force the clock to stop at two seconds to play. And Justin Rambus with kind of a silly foul. Mishawaka was willing to just dribble the clock out. And you could argue that's an intentional foul. And actually, yes, they are going to call it an intentional foul. And Jackson Snyder will go to the stripe. But now Washington will mosey their way into the free throw lane area. So apparently not an intentional foul. Two seconds to go. Cayman 58-51 leaders. Now a couple of Jackson Snyder free throws will help determine the final score. And Snyder's first free throw. After missing his first, he's hit two in a row. Has five points on the afternoon. 59-51. Another free throw to boot. Jackson Snyder, the right-hander, nothing but net. 60 to 51, inbounds Washington. And Brady Fisher is able to steal the inbounds pass, and that is gonna do it. Mishawaka, after a slow start, plays well in the second half, and they prevail over South Bend rival Washington, defeating the Panthers for the first time since 2017 and snapping a three-game win streak in this series that had been halted since the caveman left for the Northern Lakes Conference. But a big win, win number 12 of the season for Bodie Bender's boys. Mishawaka 60, South and Washington 51, the final score. Caveman will now, after a busy three-game week, will get ready for a Tuesday-Friday format against Chesterton and against the Northwood Panthers. Caveman win it, 60 to 51. Post game show will, of course, come up just around the corner. But first, let's head down to the sideline at the Mishawaka Network's Brady Gallo with Rasan Johnson. Rasan, big win today at the cave. How do you feel? Feel great. Got a good win over an NIC team, proving that we could play South Bend teams. Always beating them is always great. Yeah, first time, last time you guys beat them was 2017. How's it feel to get a win with? win against them for the first time in a while. Oh, that feels great, especially on the home floor. Just uh, doing it for our fans, doing it for the cave. Just keep, we got to just keep going. On a uh, three game win streak, stay undefeated at home. That's a good feeling. I appreciate it, good game. Thank you. And as Rasan Johnson joining Brady Gallo on the Mishawaka Network with our sideline report. We will get more thoughts on our post game report. Brian Watson will be, uh, of course, uh, <coughs> chiming in with some in very intense statistical reports He's over there uh, working on those numbers right now. We'll get some other thoughts from Brady Gallo. And again, we'll look ahead to next week with the Mishawaka Cayman. And also, we'll get a visit from Cayman head coach Bodie Bender. All that and more on the Post Game Show coming up. Here on 2 with Mishawaka Cayman Boys Basketball. They pick up win number 12 on the season. 60-51 over South and Washington. Here on 2 with Mishawaka Cayman Basketball. 